Hi, welcome to another episode of the Oliver Fetter YouTube channel where I am continuing my breakdown and calibration, calibration, maybe just inspection of this 1.9 liter ALH VW engine. I've already mapped out my cylinder bores and those are looking great. They're well within our wear limit. So today I'm actually going to be taking a look at the crankshaft, which is kind of the final stop here and maybe the oil pump too. For starters, got to get the kind of end caps off the engine here so I can even get to stuff. And then we probably will do the oil pump first because it's already bolted and securely mounted. So I'm going to go ahead and take the sprocket off, take the cover off and then inspect what's inside to make sure there's no scoring or gouging there. And then I'll be proceeding to the crankshaft where I plan to, for starters, just pull all the caps and do a thorough inspection. We're then gonna measure the crankshaft journals with a micrometer to make sure they're not out of spec and maybe use a plastic gauge to check how the bearings are doing if they look like they're reusable. Off we go. So just a few taps to the face of this guy. This is put on with some high temp Loctite and apparently if you don't tap on it, you might just break your Torx bit instead. So a couple happy taps. This is a T45 Torx for this guy right here. Well, that really wasn't a big deal, was it? So one upgrade I am considering is you can actually replace the sprocket and chain from a newer engine that has fewer teeth much like regearing a motorcycle, it means the pump's gonna spin faster and therefore you'll have more oil output. Considering it, not sold yet, but that's how you take that off. So the oil pump you can see actually picks up over here, which is where the feed tube brings it in and actually puts out over here. So it's quite literally squeezing the oil into the face of this plate as it rotates around. So it squeezes it, squeezes it, and then ejects it into the block. And that's how one of these works, just like that. Pretty tidy system, looks pretty good. I wouldn't say this is worth replacing by any means. It looks pretty darn, pretty darn fine in here. So you can see this is that inside face of the gear as it went in and we're looking good. It's very smooth. This is the outside face, also very smooth, you know, some teeny tiny signs of it going around in a circle, but nothing bad. Now taking it one step further, this part also comes out and there's a couple little grooves here you can kind of make out along the outside, but it's not bad. I think that's pretty fine. I'm not sure what these usually look like when you open them. This is the first one I've opened, but I think it looks pretty bomber in here compared to some of the 1.6 oil pumps I've opened. Most of my 1.6 oil pumps look like I fed sand through them before I opened them up. Just to show you what the inside of that looks like. Again, there's a couple little striations here, but you really can't even feel them. So I think this unit is just fine. I'm now gonna reassemble and we're actually gonna do a clearance check, quick clearance check between the two rotors to make sure that's within spec. And if that is, then I'm gonna deem this pump good and I'm gonna reuse it. There are square markings, that square and these three, and those have to go on the same side. So this goes like that, and that has to go like that. Get that oil worked around a little bit, very good. I wouldn't ever put this together dry if I could avoid it. There we go. Some lubrication in there. So if you look right here, where they're about to touch, that's where we're gonna check clearance real quick. And if that's too big, then this pump doesn't work right. And so it'd be bad, but we're gonna just check with a feeler gauge. We're gonna slip it right in there and it should be good. Putting a feeler gauge right here with it adjusted so that those lobes are almost touching or as close as they can get. And then we're gonna check what's actually between these two. The wear limit is 0 0.006, which is this gauge right here. And it doesn't, Jesus. And now it's stuck. It doesn't fit, especially without an angle. I wonder what we are at. Try point zero zero five. All my gauges are dirty. And that doesn't, well, it just goes. So we're at point zero zero five, but not point zero zero six.
Okie dokie, we are now actually ready to see what's good with the crankshaft uh, and with the main bearings. I mean, so far, not that, not that there would be a problem right here, but I mean, this thing spins nice. At any rate, we're gonna undo all these cap bolts. We're gonna pull all the caps. We're gonna carefully lay them. Oh, they're numbered. You don't even have to be that careful. <laughs> we're gonna lay them in the right order. Uh, and then we're going to pull the crankshaft out and we're going to check its journals and we're going to look at all the bearings. Here we go. Okay, we're now gonna try to pull this hoss as carefully as possible. There it goes. Forgot there's more thrust bearings. Fuck that thing. Okay, I just cleaned the crankshaft real quick and just kind of carefully looked at everything as I was doing this. So I would say this guy passes the visual inspection. Uh, so there's no feelable nicks or scratches anywhere. Nothing super weird going on. You know, both both the places where the seals ride, like right here and right there, aren't terribly grooved out, so we're good there as well. Should seal oil just fine. Looks fine, looks good. So I'm gonna jump over and just take a look at our engine bearings. This isn't too elaborate of a process, just clean them. All you gotta do is wipe the oil off and have a look-see. Here's one two, three, four, and five. Now on five, there's a little nick in it. I don't know if we're gonna get it right. Yeah, maybe right there you can see it. There's a teeny nick in this one. Love that. And as far as crank journals go, this is one, two, three, four and five because i have it this apart uh, and i think at this point i'm just gonna go full bore on this one <laughs> this engine build started as pull the <laughs> rods out and swap them and put them back in and although i think that plan actually probably would have been fine now that i'm doing it i'm much more of the opinion let's be super thorough so i think new main bearings because let's do it right and then let's get the crank polished let's rehone the block while everything's out of it put it all back together and have a banging new motor pretty much well definitely new motor new spec motor for the rabbit at any rate i'm going to check these journals to see how out of round they are or aren't and what kind of taper we're looking at. Taper is the side to side difference on this thing and out of round is the difference in diameter as you go around it. So according to Haynes, our out of round limit for any one of these journals is 0 0.0002 inches. That's pretty tight, so two mils worth of out of round and our taper limit is 0 0.0003 inches. So that's our difference from side to side. So I'm going to start off by just rechecking my micrometer because on this measurement it's pretty damn critical. Classic all everything to say like critical, 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 critical. Uh, <laughs> that it is absolutely correct. Okay, I'm not going to lie, after a brief attempt at doing this, I don't think I can actually measure even with a micrometer as accurately as I need to be right now. I would generally assume this crankshaft is good to go. Uh, so, but right now what I'm doing, because I just don't feel like I'm getting the accuracy I need to with this particular tool, mostly because I'm hunting around on a cylinder for that smallest point and then tightening it. 
So right now, my new approach for my just rough check for me is that I set this to 2.126, which is the OEM journal size, which is what size these should be. And I'm just using it as a feeler gauge. Right now it's in the locked position. And so I'm actually just kind of testing out if it feels tight or really loose in any given scenario. Because again, I just don't feel like I'm getting the accuracy I need to. But I think what I'm doing right now is actually not the worst check. And yes, it's not actually measuring it, but since I've determined I am unable to do that accurately, this is a pretty good plan B. And from what I can tell, just based on how this goes on there, these all seem very, very, very much the same. Tolerance here on this is 0 0.002 inches or 0 0.003 inches. I feel like realistically my like best resolution with the micrometer at my current skill level, unfortunately, is probably like 0 0.0010 inches, um, at least on crank journals like this. Uh, so in this case, I might just call around and see what engine shops here are gonna charge. Unfortunately, I think there's really only like one engine shop to go to and they definitely charge a lot. So just gonna have to price that out and see what's good there. All right, one last thing I wanna check today while I'm still tinkering. I wanna take this, oh, there we go this wrist pin out for the purpose of checking my new max speeding rods because last time I used max speeding rods and I'm you know have mixed feelings about this company honestly there but they do make you know decent quality rods for the most part uh, but I want to check my wrist pin fit inside the new rods because the last time I bought rods for my 1.6 this was actually way too tight it was like a full press fit into the rod small end and that's obviously not what you want uh, it needs to kind of do that it should you know nicely slide in instant replay i'm looking for that fit so i want to know now though if i'm going to do that because if so when i take the crank over i'll take everything else over and get the small ends checked i almost didn't check that on my 1.6 i pressed them in and i was like huh that's a little weird and then I almost shrugged it off. Thank God I didn't. It probably would have bound up instantly and have been a problem. Okay, here we go. Max beating rods. Honestly, when you compare the two, these are definitely better, but the ALH rods are close to being decent compared to the 1.6 rods. All right, that's a W for sure. All right, quick recap. It actually got worse as I tried more and I added a little film of oil, so they're not completely dry anymore, but so that's about how much resistance is on it. You can see there's a decent amount of drag and it doesn't just fall out. Like it's definitely kind of in there. So I might need to check, I mean, given this is a a used wrist pin too, which you would think would make it smaller, which is a good thing, but I should wait probably until I have new pistons uh, with the actual wrist pins that I'm gonna use and then check those as opposed to using this old wrist pin. But at any rate, it does look like that could be a problem because I mean right there, oh, there we go. I mean, that's better. It's still pretty tight though. And you definitely want enough room that it gets well oiled, so gonna have to circle back to that I guess circle back to rechecking the rods because now that I think about it definitely need the actual wrist pins that I'm gonna use there's no point in checking it with the wrong wrist pins well this would generally conclude the teardown series because aside from pulling off the oil filter housing I don't think there's a single thing left to tear off this block let's just kind of recap the information we've learned the cylinder walls slash bores are good to go those don't need any machining uh, and if I go with new pistons, which I plan on doing, then I'm gonna give those a hone so the new rings can seat properly and works good there. So we'll have a honing video. The crankshaft and mains, um, from a visual inspection and my janky micrometer feeler gauge test, which I don't endorse as a 
professional way to check your crankshaft, you know, journals for size, but you know, for my own purposes, I feel like it's better than nothing at the moment. I don't think I would hesitate to take this crankshaft and throw it back in there at the exact same bearings. Seems like this engine was running fine. That said, I do have it all apart. So I feel like it's going to be potentially worth the money. Again, I'm going to call the engine shop on Monday and actually see what we're dealing with. But as far as cost, but I feel like it's probably worth the money to have the crank checked and polished and just use new bearings because I'm in here and I do want this engine to last a long time. I don't see getting rid of this car anytime soon and I want it to be a pretty high horsepower beast and hopefully it won't eat any more turbos. So let's just do all the nitty gritty, like annoyingly expensive work now and make it nice and then we'll be good to go. And then we also check the oil pump and the oil pump looks good. So I'd actually feel zero compulsion to use a new oil pump. That thing checked out as, as being solid. So I think I can save a few bucks there. This does go to show though that project creep is real. Again, I bought a thousand dollar motor, thought I was gonna put about $350 worth of rods in it not do a single other thing and get out of there clean. And instead, now that I'm in here, I'm feeling kind of some, the opportunity cost of maybe passing up those things, because this really is gonna be a sweet build and I'm really excited for it. And I do want it to last a long time. So I think my project cre has creeped significantly because now I'm looking at $100 worth of new bearings, $550 worth of new pistons, $150 worth of polishing which might that might be a joke number honestly it could be more expensive than that still doesn't include things to put it back together like a new head gasket a 200 dollars timing kit or anything like that so you do the math slash i should do the math okay i did the math because no one wants to do math at any rate uh if everything i just listed out is about the prices i said that's at least 2700 dollars worth of engine which i mean compared to buying like a new crate motor actually come to think of it is still pennies you know people spend ten thousand plus dollars on just a motor in a box so we're getting out of here probably for about three thousand dollars with a motor that's going to take whatever i throw at it which is actually pretty sick so now that i say that all out loud not so bad and that's still actually cheaper than my brand new van crate engine and that's not built at all that's just a stock engine so we're doing good uh, in, in recap. So for a total rebuild by yourself with minimal machining work needed, you're looking at about $3,000 to rebuild a used ALH block. Not so bad, including the cost of the motor. If anyone wants my old ALH OEM rods or pistons, I will happily sell them to you for a convenience fee. I'm not going to use them. It feels kind of like a shame to throw them away because I do feel like they are usable. Uh, if you need OEM rods or pistons, please drop a comment and we can connect. Outside of that, I'm excited. The build's as torn apart as it's going to get, and then we should start going back together. I would say soon, but kind of soon. <laughs> and yeah, stoked. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video is helpful for you. Please like and subscribe. Have a good day out there.